This is a video on braces for spinal fractures. We will discuss spinal fractures, the importance of stability and braces in spinal fractures, what these braces are and how to apply them. Spinal fractures, whether caused by disease or trauma, can range from a mildly painful condition to a serious and even life-threatening situation. Since the human spine is a complex structure, spine surgeons need to be very careful in diagnosing exactly where a fracture occurs. Accurate classification of a spinal fracture is very important in determining the appropriate management plan. When describing and diagnosing spinal fractures, spine surgeons use the Dennis classification to divide the spinal column into three sections, namely the anterior column, which is made up of the anterior longitudinal ligament, the anterior two-thirds of the vertebral body, and the anterior two-thirds of the intervertebral disc and annulus fibrosus. Secondly, the middle column, which is made up of the posterior one-third of the vertebral body, the posterior one-third of the intervertebral disc and annulus fibrosus, as well as the posterior longitudinal ligament. Lastly, the posterior column is made up of the pedicles, the facet joints and articular processes, the ligamentum flavum, the neural arch, and the interconnecting ligaments. A visual representation of the Dennis classification is shown here. Generally, a fracture is considered stable if only the anterior column is involved, as in the case of most wedge fractures. Instability occurs when injuries affect two contiguous columns, that is, the anterior and middle column, or the middle and posterior column. Fractures that leave the spine unstable often include neurological problems such as paralysis, loss of sensation, and bowel and bladder difficulties. Unstable spinal fractures need to be treated immediately. These fractures almost always require surgical interventions that are designed to stabilize and align the vertebral column, improve neurological status, return the patient to functional status as soon as possible and usually involves internal fixation which gives accurate reduction, immediate stability and early mobilization. The treatment of stable spinal fractures usually involves immobilization using a brace with brief bed rest and pain medication administered as necessary. This is an example of a Philadelphia collar. The Philadelphia collar uses front and back reinforcements and provides superior stabilization ensuring cervical spine immobilization. It is lightweight, it is water and liquid resistant. It comes in three adjustable sizes. It has a trachea opening. It alleviates heat and moisture and is durable plastic which limits motion. Any patient with a history of trauma requires C-spine immobilization and the use of a Philadelphia collar if the patient is unconscious is complaining of neck pain or midline tenderness, has limited movement, is using their hands to, to support their neck, has any neurological deficit, or has stable or simple fractures. We will now demonstrate how to put on a Philadelphia collar. Step 1. Lie the patient face up and have someone stand at the head of the patient providing C-spine immobilization and perform a log roll. Step 2. Place the back of the Philadelphia collar around the patient's neck and make sure that it is centered. Step 3. Roll the patient onto his back again and make sure the neck remains stabilized. Step 4. Hold the front of the Philadelphia collar and place it over the patient's neck, making sure it fits snugly onto the patient's chest. Step 5. Fasten the Velcro strap securely and make sure that they are equally placed. The sternal occipital mandibular immobilizer is an example of a rigid cervical thoracic orthosis which maintains alignment of the cervical and thoracic spine and prevents mobilization thereof. This level of immobil immobility allows the damaged structures to heal. The SOMI brace has an anterior chest plate extending to the xiphoid process as well as a metal or plastic bars that curve over the shoulders. An occipital component attaches to the chest plate as well as a chin piece which can be removed for eating. The cervical thoracic orthosis can be indicated in stable injuries to the lower cervical spine, in the treatment of cervical thoracic injuries, or post-operatively in patients with a questionable fixation. The SOMI brace is relatively comfortable to wear. It is ideal for bedridden patients because it has no posterior rods, 
A detachable chin piece can be removed for eating, and it provides good restriction to flexion, but is less good for control of neck extension, lateral bending, and axial rotation. The Apco brace is another form of cervical thoracic orthosis and was designed by Dr. Abraham while working in Conradi Hospital in Cape Town. It provides firm sternal and shoulder anchorage with, with three point pressure on the mandible, occipit, and forehead and provides significant immobilization of the cervical and thoracic spine. It also gives greater control over flexion as well as lateral movement. The thoracic lumbar sacral orthosis and lumbar sacral orthosis are two-piece plastic braces supporting the spine from the thoracic vertebrae of the chest to the base of the spine at the sacrum, which is the TLSO, or from the lumbar region of the spine to the sacrum, which is the LSO. General indications for these braces are to reduce pain by restricting mobility of the trunk, facilitating healing following an injury or a surgical procedure to the spine or related soft tissue, and to otherwise support weak spinal muscles or a deformed spine. Specific indications are as follows. We will now demonstrate how to put on a TLSO. Step one, lie the patient face up and have someone stand at the head of the patient providing C-spine immobilization and perform a log roll. Step two, place the back of the TLSO around the patient's back and make sure that it is centered. Step three, roll the patient onto his back again. Step 4. Hold the front of the TLSO and place it over the patient's torso. Make sure it fits snugly. Then fasten the Velcro strap securely. Step 5. Assist the patient in mobilization. Also, ensure that the brace fits comfortably and does not cause any pain.